What's up guys, Joycon94 here today, and today we're gonna be dry brining and sous viding some steaks, which you could tell from the title. Um and it's gonna be edited on my trying to get in the frame. Let me flip you guys around. It is gonna be edited on my new computer. Now, if you know me in real life, I mentioned I was gonna make a build video. I got too pissed off at it. I've never built a computer for it. It's my first time. So I didn't make it yet, as you can see. I still gotta figure out how to hook those stupid fans up. There's one here and one there. I couldn't figure out where to put them. I was tired. I didn't feel like messing with it. But the specs, I might put them on the screen. But what I got is this Cosier case, however the hell you say it. That brand right there. I have 12 gig or 64 gigs of RAM, a NVIDIA 3060 graphics card, an ASUS Pro Art, D660, D4 graphics card, uh, the fans in Arctic, some shit, a 65 watt, um, whatever the hell it's called, power supply, and an Intel i9 processor. So yeah, guys, let's get into it though. We're gonna dry brine these steaks, which simply means, which I'll show you when we get upstairs, but we're just gonna take them, we're gonna put them on a raised surface now. What I suggest is a half sheet pan with a um, cooling rack, like a cookie cooling rack, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and yeah, we're gonna, and if you don't have that, if you take some forks and kind of lay them down, I'll show you how to do it. Or even if you take tin foil and ball it up and put them on there, whatever you do, you just kind of just want to get these steaks raised off the surface. And the reason you're doing that is because the air in your fritter is gonna go around. It's gonna dry out the meat a little bit, which might sound bad, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull that salt into the surface of the meat and it's gonna pull out moisture. And that moisture is gonna get dried by the uh, air and coldness of your fan, which is good, trust me, just listen to me, okay? What that moisture is, it's protein latent moisture, meaning when it comes out, it's gonna give you a better crust, a better sear. And this is gonna make the flavor better. So what's gonna happen, the salt's gonna go all the way into the meat and season it all the way through. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so I got these two ribeyes. They have pretty fucking good marbling on them. Uh, obviously, you can see we got these from Wegmans. You can see the price, so yeah. So, you want to take your steaks out. Look, what you can do if you don't have a raised rack even, is you can even open this, take this upside down, stab a shit ton of holes in it with a fork, and put the steak on there. It'll work in a pinch. Do I, you know, I would get the rack, it's cheap. You probably already have one, look around your house. Um, but yeah, let's get right into this part. All right guys, so now you just wanna salt these well. Okay, flip them over to the same thing on the other side. Now these go in the fridge. Um, and just leave them in there like this overnight. Um, you can do this anywhere from like four to 24 hours. Um, it's seven o'clock now. We'll probably cook these around. We'll probably eat these around six tomorrow. So however long that is, I can't do math. That was dinner. Um, we're just chilling tonight. Um, probably just gonna watch TV and buckle my computer. So, not much to film. If anything cool happens, I'll show you. And uh, now I'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's about seven in the morning. Well, it is seven in the morning, something. So, here's our steaks. Now, I want you guys to notice can you see how? See how they kind of change colors? That's the salt work, that's a good thing. And like I said, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna flip them. And yeah, I'm gonna go for a little while longer until dinner time. All right guys, so I'm actually downloading something called DaVinci Resolve. It's a different editing software that I've ever used. 
uh, for whatever reason, the version of Sony Vegas that I downloaded from their website um, is just crashing and I can't figure it out and I'm getting salty with it. So I'm trying to venture resolve. I tried After Effects um, and I wasn't aware that it's not really a video editing software. It's more for After Effects, which makes sense why it's called that. Um, I do have a subscription with the motherboard I bought for a, a three month trial Premiere, or I'm sorry, Adobe Creative Cloud, which will have Premiere Pro, which I will try. And if I have to buy, I'll have to buy it. But yeah, I'm trying to eventually resolve. So who knows how this video is going to look. So let me know how the quality looks. Um, I'll put text in the screen saying what I edited this with, if it's anything other than Sony Vegas. Cause I'm going to try to fix that because that's what I've been using for fucking 15 years. So I pretty well know the program pretty decently. Um, so I'm going to try to fix it. But if not, and I edited it in something else, it'll say on the screen so you guys know, hey, if it doesn't look as good or if something's weird with it, that's why. But I'm going to do my best to make this a crazy edit. Not crazy, but I really want to step up my game on my videos. That's why I bought a $1,800 computer to edit videos with. So yeah, let's get into it. And while we're sitting here, this is my sous vide machine. Um, obviously, you don't have one of these. You can't really do this. You can do it in a pot. With just a pot of water but it's really hard to maintain the temperature correctly you can do it in a um you can obviously actually really sous vide in a dishwasher but i've never tried it but you can look up videos and try it if you want but this is the circulator i have it's a little dirty because it's been in um back store so i have to obviously clean it first but it's an anova it's just a water circulator and um what this does is it keeps the water at a consistent temperature of whatever you set it to and it will keep that temperature for months if you want to or hours which i think we're gonna do for like two two and a half hours we're gonna cook this um but i'll explain more of that later All right, guys, so I got to get ready for this. So I'll see you guys in a second and about. All right, guys, and we're back for the day. I got my shower, I did my hair, got dressed. Um, and you can see, yeah, I'm learning DaVinci Resolve um, as we speak, learning color grading and a bunch of stuff. So please, really, I am going to use DaVinci Resolve um, if I didn't put the text on the screen, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to. Uh, um, but anyways, yeah, I'm learning the program. So if the quality isn't as good as it normally is, um, just bear with me. It'll, I'll fix it. I'm working on it. I'll probably upload like five or six render tests um, that you guys won't see, but I'll see uh, before I decide. But hopefully this looks good. Tell me though, please tell me below in the comments what you guys think of the quality. Let's get back to the video. All right, guys. So we're outside now again. Tell me how the color looks. Uh, I'm really interested. I'm liking this program so far. It's tricky to learn. I've been using Sony Vegas for fuck 15 years. So I'm a little new to this. So if anything doesn't look right, that's why. But yeah, we're gonna cover up the four-wheeler. It's uh, the wind blew off of it, blew the stupid tarp off. So let's brush it off and fix that. I got some bricks. And I forgot my glove inside. And I'm too lazy to uh, go get it. So we're just gonna do it this way. It'll work. I mean, it's not gonna really hurt this thing too bad. To be in the snow a little bit, they're kind of meant for it. But at the same time, I don't want my seat to get fucked up. Um, by the way, if anyone wants to go ride, I got a beautiful Sportsman 850 here that I don't use because I have no way to transport it and no one to ride it with. So it be up, bitch. All right, that should do it. By the way, um, all right, guys, that should do it. Shouldn't blow off again. Hopefully not. Otherwise, I'll have to add more bricks. But, um... We're gonna go this way so I don't set off the blink camera. My grandma doesn't ask me a billion questions. Um, anyways, if you guys want to ride, hit me up. I'll make some fucking four wheeling vlogs. I would love to do that. I love that four wheeler. You know, I probably should sell it because I don't use the fucking thing. But at the same time, I don't have that that much to pay off on it. Still, left to pay off on it, and I would love to ride it. So again, if you're one of my buddies from real life and you got a four wheeler in a truck. Or we can run a trailer and you want to go rip some trails sometime. Hit your boy up because I'll always be down. Alright guys. Fuck, I'm out of breath. That's bad. Alright guys, so it's about 3 o'clock. It's 3.06 right now. So because this is going to have to cook for about two and a half hours, 
Um, we're gonna take our steaks out now and get everything ready. So start heating up your water, which I'll show you in just a second. All right, guys, so we have the Anova heated. We're gonna um, set the temperature. We're gonna do 131. And we're gonna do it for 2.5 hours. And that will do is it'll start heating up. So then you want to take your lid and just put your lid on, right? And that's gonna start heating the water. It's already 117, so we'll be ready to go pretty quickly. All right, guys, so we're going to close up our vacuum sealer. We're going to switch it to operate. We're going to hit vacuum. Yours might be different than mine. This is how this one works. I, this is my grandma's. I have my own vacuum sealer, and it's even more confusing than this one. So then I think you hit seal. And just let it sit for, like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. I'm going to hit it again. I don't know if you have to hold it or what. Now I think it's sealing that it's flashing slow like that. Okay, now let's open it up. All right, and we're sealed. All right, guys, so these are ready for sous vide. All right, guys, so what I have here is a sous vide rack tool. You don't necessarily need one of these. Just makes things a little easier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this. We're gonna put stake one there. Then we're gonna go like this. Okay. We're gonna take stake two here. And what this is gonna do is help keep them weighted and held properly. So our um, sous vide machine is heated up. Always lift it away from you so the hot steam doesn't get you. It's not gonna like burn you. You know you can touch it. Or not touch the water really, but you can hold your hands over it. You'll be okay. Um, and then you just wanna drop your stakes in. They should stay sunken because they're vacuum sealed so there's no air in them. And the rack will help keep them in place. And then literally all I stuff to do to cook these, just put this back on, wait two and a half hours. Now, let me sit down and talk to you guys about something though. All right guys, so there's about an hour left on our steaks. Um, it's gonna be finished cooking in the sous vide. Um, so what I have here is a pot of water with about 10 cups of water in it, I think. A little less, a little more than half of the pot filled with water. We're gonna make some um, oven baked steak fries. So I got three potatoes here. I'm gonna get some more from out there. Um, I got a bowl that I'm gonna put cold water in. So yeah, let's get started. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna square these up, take off the top, the tail, Okay, the edge, this edge, spin it around, square it off, square it off. Okay, you can save these, do whatever you want with them. So, what I'm gonna do is I'll cut it like this, and like this. Okay, these aren't the best potatoes to do this with, to be honest. Um, We'll make it work. You just want to get them relatively the same size, thickness, shape. So like this one here, you see these are thin. So that's about a half. So look, you can see right there, half. So cut that in half. Now these are all roughly the same size and thicknesses, right? So just repeat with the rest of your potatoes. This one here is a little weird. So I'm just gonna go like this, like this. A little bit go in the scrap pile okay one of these more round ones these really aren't the right potatoes for this but again we'll make it work
Okay, so this one here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Okay. This one here, you can see, they're pretty close to the same thickness. They're just a little thinner or square, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, this one here, I'm gonna go in half. Okay. You know what, let's change it up. These aren't the right potatoes for fries, so we're gonna make roasted potatoes instead. So we're already halfway there. We're just gonna square them off a little more, okay? Take all these, boom, there's roasted bits. This is part of cooking. You guys gotta be able to adapt. Would they have worked as fries? Sure, but I think this will be better. We're gonna make these pretty smaller cubes. We can use less potatoes, okay? We're gonna make them all around, around this size, right? All right guys, so what I have here is a big bowl of cold water and I'm just gonna put my potato cubes in there while I cut the rest. All right guys, so the next thing you wanna do is take your potatoes and put them in cold water and just run them through it, mix them around, right? Right, and then you're gonna wanna, um, you don't have to use a strainer, but I have it right here. You're gonna drain your water. Um, obviously you can just go like that with your hand. But I have a strainer right here because we're gonna need it later, so why not? And you're gonna repeat that process right there. So in it, um, you know, rinse it around with your hands and then dumping it three to four times. You want the water to be clear. It's gonna wash out some of the starch. It's gonna help us in the long run. So just make sure you don't skip this step. Also, I didn't peel these this time. Normally I like potatoes peeled because I originally planned on doing them for fries and I was squaring them. I didn't peel them because there's only gonna be a little bit of skins. So the majority of it has no skin, but every once in a while, a little bit of skin kind of helps them be a little bit more rustic. So I left them on. You could peel them completely if you want. You don't have to square them. You can cut them differently and you know, not waste those bits, but I don't really care about those extra bits. So yeah, rinse them off. All right, my water is boiling. We're gonna preheat our oven to 450. We're gonna take our big 12 inch cast iron skillet and put that in the oven, let it get hot. Or you can use a roasting tray, cookie sheet, whatever you have, but that's what I'm using. All right. All right, so the water is boiling. I'm gonna put a nice, Heavy pinch or two of salt. Okay. Then, this is a little weird. I'm uh, loosely following uh, Sonny from That Dude Can Cook's recipe. He said one to two table, or three to four tablespoons of baking soda in there. We're gonna try it. I've never tried this before. For a little bit. Two. Three. Okay. And then we're just gonna put our potatoes in there. And we're gonna blanch these from 10 to 15 minutes. What we're gonna do is pre-cook these. So basically all I have to do is finish cooking in the oven. This way they don't have to roast for as long. All right, so I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit for one. And it's been about half the 10 minutes. So I'm gonna stir this a little bit, get those bubbles go down for one. Come on. And I'm gonna test a couple. I'm just gonna take a little bit out. I'm gonna bring them over here. Okay. Then I'm gonna poke them. Knife's going in pretty easily. Um, but they're not completely mushy. I say maybe another minute we're gonna give these. All right, guys, so it's been about another minute. There's two minutes left in the timer, so it took uh, eight minutes for me. Yeah, this is gonna depend on your potato sizes, right? If you do bigger cuts, um, it's gonna take longer. If you do smaller cuts, it's gonna take less time, right? I think everyone understands that much. So they're in the steaming basket. We're gonna let them steam for a few seconds. Um, 
give him like a cup. We're gonna let him go for a minute and 30 seconds in the steamer basket. All right, guys, so we're gonna take our pan out. Okay. And we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Okay. I'm gonna put that back in for a few minutes to warm up. So while that's going, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our potatoes and put them back in here. We're gonna take another little drizzle of olive oil. Just a bit. Touch salt. Remember we already put some salt, just a nice little couple pinches, nothing too crazy. And then with this, we're gonna go a little quick glass of coarse ground black pepper. Then I'm gonna open up the mill. So if you have a mill, you can control it with this little thing here. I'm gonna open up and get some bigger cracks for this. Okay. Um, the only other thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of paprika. Just a touch, just a touch. It'll give you a little bit of color. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're really gonna toss this around and get this around. What we're gonna do is break up the surface area of the potatoes. And you'll see when I show you the close up, but it's gonna help them roast and get a better texture. You can see already what it's kind of doing. You can see how it's, it's kind of mashing them up a little bit on the edges. So do this a bunch. All right, so it's been long enough that oil to be nice and really hot. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna put All right, so our potatoes have probably been there in about a minute, minute and a half. So I'm gonna time three, three, zero. Because my potatoes are so small the way I cut them, I think five-ish minutes per side will brown them pretty well. So just keep an eye on them. We're gonna wanna turn these a few times throughout the cook so they get browned evenly, get nice and crispy all around. All right, guys, so it's been about five minutes. We're gonna take the potatoes out and we're gonna flip them around. Guys, another five minutes. Shit. Well, I just realized I didn't hit record again. So I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer on this third side and I'm gonna do them a little bit longer. Um, they're not getting brown enough. So it's all about experimenting. If they're, you know, not brown enough, just keep cooking them. I forgot to hit record again, but basically <laughs> I took my garlic out of my knife and smashed it. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help the garlic release all of its flavors and oils into that oil and into this butter when we add it, infusing it into potatoes. Um, alternatively, and I suggest it, but I just don't have it with me and I don't wanna go to the store. You can add some sage, some rosemary, some thyme, um, and roast those in with them also. Again. That. that there is what we're looking for. So, 
try to make sure you get sides that aren't brown like that going. Um, also, I got these bits of butter here for basting the steaks. Um, so it's about a half a stick for each steak. Listen, I know someone just went, whoa, 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 half a stick of butter. You're not eating it. You just need enough so it will, it'll turn nut brown and impart its nutty flavor onto the steak. Just trust me, okay? So yeah, keep roasting potatoes. The um, steaks have about 15-ish more minutes on them, maybe a little less, a little more. Um, as not switched yet, I'm trying to look at the thing and see what time it says. 13 minutes, so we're right on schedule. All right, guys, so we're gonna take our potatoes out again. garlic with the peel is on everything that's totally fine. I'm gonna put one in the middle, one over here, one right there, one right there, sure. This one will work. And that one over here. Alright. Also we'll take the butter and drop that. A little knobs over. Back in the oven again. 10 to 15-ish minutes. Kind of just keep watching it. Keep moving it around as you need to. Okay, give them another stir. That awesome, awesome garlic butter. Now kind of spread them out evenly. If you kind of push them a little bit, they'll kind of stick to the pan and get even crispier, probably. So, all right, back in they go. The steaks have about five minutes left. So, I'm gonna flip these again, but my phone is charging, so it's at 10%. So, I'm not gonna film it, but yeah, I'm gonna move them around again. All right, guys, so I'm kind of tethered um, right now because I'm charging my phone. But our steaks are done. So you wanna open this again away from you. I kinda of do this and tilt it. Some of that water drains off. That, this in here. Grab out steak number one. Put him in there. And then grab out steak number two. That one, this one will be my grandma's. The other one has more fat, so I'll eat that one. So yeah. You can turn off your sous vide machine, and that's it. Let's get to the next step. Okay, the next thing you want to do is get your steaks, and you want to cut the bag open. and take out your steak now. They're gonna look disgusting right now. Trust me, they won't look like that when we're done. Um, basically what had happened, this is what your steak would look like with no sear if it was just cut. You didn't get that Maillard reaction. But yeah, so take your steaks out, let them sit. Okay, now you're gonna get a paper towel and pat them nice and dry. Now, I'm personally gonna take another thing of black pepper, just a little bit, and just lightly crack it on them. Just a little bit. You don't need more salt, at least you shouldn't, because these are dry brined. And then just flip it over, and move it to a different spot, spot of the paper salad where it's not wet. And pat the other side dry. Okay, our potatoes should just be about done. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put them 
These are about done. So we're gonna turn the oven off. We're gonna set these over here. Okay, we're gonna put this on medium high heat, touch over medium, and let this get up to heat for like three to four minutes. And then once this is heated up, that should give the oven enough time. I'm actually gonna crack the oven so it can uh, cool down a bit. And we're gonna put those back in there. We're gonna try to cool this down to around 200 degrees and put that back into this way. It'll continue to roast a little bit more and they'll stay warm. Um, as far as the corn goes, just a can of corn, just heat it up. Everyone knows how to do that. So yeah, get your pan nice and hot through for three to four minutes, maybe even five. Um, I'm using cast iron. That's what I would suggest. You can use stainless steel. If you really have to in a pinch, you can use nonstick. But cast iron and stainless steel or carbon steel are the three best. As far as the oil, I would suggest peanut oil or avocado oil because they have a high smoke point. This is peanut oil that I used from that turkey. I strained it off. You can see it's beautiful, clean oil still. Um, but actually what I think I did is I think I poured the oil that I didn't use to fry with into here and I poured the oil from the fryer back into the big container. But either way, you can use oil that you fry with a few times. This oil is perfectly fine. And the reason you want to use this as opposed to an olive oil or something because it has a higher smoke point. All right guys, so our pan is pretty good and hot now. We're gonna put our potatoes back in the oven to look down like I said. Should be right around 200 degrees and it's off so it doesn't get you know, any hotter, obviously. So yeah, let's get to our pan. All right, so that, that pan's probably nice and hot now. The thing is, my grandma likes her steaks well done. The way I cook them, they're gonna be medium rare, so I'm gonna have to cook this in the pan normally, more than I normally would. But you wanna hear that sizzle. You want to kind of just push a little bit of pressure just so it gets good contact. But not too much. You're going to cook it for about a minute on one side. Okay, so then about a minute, we're going to flip that steak. Now, the sear won't be perfect yet, so don't worry about that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I flip that stick again. I'm gonna drop the heat down to like medium. I'm gonna throw in half a stick of butter. Now, because my grandma likes her steak well done, I'm gonna turn the oven back on, okay, to bake. And I'm gonna do it at like 300, right? I took the potatoes out. I'm gonna put them in the microwave to keep them warm, not on, but in there. Right. And what I'm going to do is finish my grandma's steak off in the oven. So first things first though, I'm going to take this butter. Okay. I'm going to tilt the pan and baste for about 45 seconds to a minute. For her steak. Now mind you, when I do my steak, these times are going to be different. This is for a well done steak. And you can see that butter is kind of turning brown and nutty. And that's exactly what you want. Now, alternatively, I could just keep keeping it, cooking this in the in the pan um, until it's done, which I might do. But as a backup, I have the oven heating to 300 degrees, and I'm gonna decide in a few seconds what I want to do. So, all right. So it's been about a minute. We're gonna flip that steak again. And now you can see that beautiful, beautiful crust. I'll show you in better lighting in a second. Now if you want, also you can add fresh herbs, just garlic, rosemary, thyme, um, yeah. So I'm gonna baste this for about a minute. All right, so I actually took the, the temperature. It's actually cooked enough now for her. Put in the pan. So yeah, we're gonna take this off. We're gonna clean out our pan get it re-oiled up and repeat with my steak, but we're gonna film that too, so hold on. All right, guys, so 
We're gonna put my steak in and we're gonna time it for one minute. Gently push on the edges just to get good contact. Cook over medium high heat, one minute. Okay, it's been a minute. Get a good hold of it. Recoat the pan. And place back down. Time. One more minute. Put a little pressure. All right guys, and we're done with the second steak. We're gonna let that rest for a few minutes while we carve my grandma's. All right guys, so, you wanna take it. Again, hers is well done. We'll slice it on a bias, like this. Give me nice pieces, and again, you can see hers is all the way well done, like she likes it. And now it's time for my steak. So I'm gonna take this bit off first. This is the cap. Ah. And you can see it's cooked perfectly medium rare. It's gonna be good. So we're gonna set the cap aside, take this bit off. Then we got the eye. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna slice on a bias. Okay. All right. This is how we'll flip this. We'll take the ribeye, my grandma, and we'll kind of fan it out like this. We will take a bit of potatoes. Okay, put those over here. I just realized you guys can't see what I'm doing. That's probably better, huh? And then I'll do Nice scoop of corn. Okay. Now to plate mine. We'll take the eye. We'll put that kind of here. We'll put the cap kind of around it. Okay. I'm kind of trying to put the take back together, if that makes sense. So this piece is up here, I think. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, just look how perfectly that's cooked. We're gonna save that piece right there and try that piece. This piece can go over here. I guess it doesn't really matter how you put it on there. Corn. Yeah. All right, guys. So, got a piece of steak. Potatoes. Mm. I'll talk to you guys downstairs. I gotta go eat this. All right, and what do you think? Delicious. One through ten. Hey. Shit. All right, guys. Sous vide steak. Now, 
I overcooked mine a little bit. What I would do differently the next time is because the steaks were thinner than the um, guide I was kind of following, I would do them for 30 or less seconds per side um, when you see them in the pan. So 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other, base for 30 seconds, then base for 30 seconds. So what I would change differently because I overcooked mine just a little bit. Um, but we'll talk more about that downstairs. I didn't mean to record yet, but I guess I'll record. So, hey, I fell too. I overcooked my steak. I didn't even eat it. I threw the fucking thing out. I don't eat overcooked steaks. Um, I will put a text in the screen before saying to cook it for 30 seconds. So I was thinking, I got confused. Um, I'm tired. So I didn't realize that they weren't an inch and a half steak. So like half an inch to an inch steaks. So if they were inch and a half, you would do it a minute, minute per side. Um, so those steaks, they were probably about that thin. Probably about an inch and a half or half an inch maybe even um i would do them for 30 seconds per side so 30 seconds on one side flip it 30 seconds flip it again base 30 seconds flip it base 30 more seconds then you should nail it um but it's all try and error error that's the thing about cooking i'm not gonna not upload this i'm not gonna not take this out because i failed uh, my grandma loved hers it was cooked perfectly it was delicious it tasted good it just i don't eat overcooked steak it just i can't do it it's like chewing on rubber um but it tasted great. Um, so it wasn't the sous vide's fault, it was my fault, searing it for too long. Um, and those things happen, so. That's gonna be it for today. Um, if this is the end of the vlog, hope you guys give this video a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. And if not, I cut that part out of the vlog so you didn't see it, and you don't see any of this part. If you do see this part, maybe I left it in because I thought it was funny. The world will never know. Well, maybe they will. Anyways, my buddy Brian might come over. I might film and cook some stuff tomorrow. I don't know. Um, but yeah, for now, that's going to be it.